Welcome to Slothful Slumber, the podcast where we transform the vast knowledge of the internet into a gentle lullaby for your mind. I'm your host, Luna Dreamwell, and I'm here to guide you on a journey to tranquility through the soothing cadence of Wikipedia articles. Each episode will delve into the most wonderfully mundane and sleep-inducing topics helping you drift off into a realm of serene dreams. So find your comfortable space, close your eyes, and let the dull hum of information carry you into a restful slumber. Now let's embark on tonight's voyage of tranquil learning as we explore a topic so peacefully uneventful it just might whisk you away to the land of dreams. This Wikipedia article is titled Benoit Mandelbrot. Benoit B. Mandelbrot, born the 20th of November 1924 and died the 14th of October 2010, was a Polish-born French-American mathematician and polymath with broad interests in the practical sciences, especially regarding what he labeled as the art of roughness of physical phenomena and the uncontrolled element in life. He referred to himself as a fractalist and is recognized for his contribution to the field of fractal geometry, which included coining the word fractal, as well as developing a theory of roughness and self-similarity in nature. In 1936, at the age of 11, Mandelbrot and his family emigrated from Warsaw, Poland, to France. After World War II ended, Mandelbrot studied mathematics, graduating from universities in Paris and in the United States, and receiving a master's degree in aeronautics from the California Institute of Technology. He spent most of his career in both the United States and France, having dual French and American citizenship. In 1958, he began a 35-year career at IBM, where he became an IBM fellow and periodically took leaves of absence to teach at Harvard University. At Harvard, following the publication of his study of U.S. commodity markets in relation to cotton futures, he taught economics and applied sciences. Because of his access to IBM's computers, Mandelbrot was one of the first to use computer graphics to create and display fractal geometric images, leading to his discovery of the Mandelbrot set in 1980. He showed how visual complexity can be created from simple rules. He said that things typically considered to be rough, a mess, or chaotic, such as clouds or shorelines, actually had a degree of order. His math and geometry-centered research included contributions to such fields as statistical physics, meteorology, hydrology, geomorphology, anatomy, taxonomy, neurology, linguistics, information technology, computer graphics, economics, geology, medicine, physical cosmology, engineering, chaos theory, econophysics, metallurgy, and the social sciences. Toward the end of his career, he was Sterling Professor of Mathematical Sciences at Yale University, where he was the oldest professor in Yale's history to receive tenure. Mandelbrot also held positions at the Pacific Northwest National Laboratory, Université Lille Nord de France, Institute for Advanced Study and Centre National de la Recherche Scientifique. During his career, he received over 15 honorary doctorates and served on many science journals, along with winning numerous awards. His autobiography, The Fractalist, Memoir of a Scientific Maverick, 
was published posthumously in 2012. Early years. Benedict Mandelbrot was born in a Lithuanian Jewish family in Warsaw during the Second Polish Republic. His father made his living trading clothing. His mother was a dental surgeon. During his first two school years, he was tutored privately by an uncle who despised rote learning. Most of my time was spent playing chess, reading maps, and learning how to open my eyes to everything around me. In 1936, when he was 11, the family emigrated from Poland to France. The move, World War II, and the influence of his father's brother, the mathematician Scholem Mandelbreut, who had moved to Paris around 1920, further prevented a standard education. The fact that my parents, as economic and political refugees, joined Solem in France saved our lives, he writes. Mandelbrot attended the Lycée Rollin, now the Collège Lycée Jacques de Cour, in Paris until the start of World War II, when his family moved to Toul, France. He was helped by Rabbi David Feuerwerker, the rabbi of Brive la Gaillard, to continue his studies. Much of France was occupied by the Nazis at the time, and Mandelbrot recalls this period. Our constant fear was that a sufficiently determined foe might report us to an authority, and we would be sent to our deaths. This happened to a close friend from Paris, Zina Morhanga, a physician in a nearby county seat. Simply to eliminate the competition, another physician denounced her. We escaped this fate. Who knows why? In 1944, Mandelbrot returned to Paris, studied at the Lycée du Parc in Lyon, and in 1945 to 1947 attended the École Polytechnique, where he studied under Gaston Julia and Paul Lévy. From 1947 to 1949, he studied at California Institute of Technology, where he earned a master's degree in aeronautics. Returning to France, he obtained his Ph.D. degree in mathematical sciences at the University of Paris in 1952. Research career From 1949 to 1958, Mandelbrot was a staff member at the Centre National de la Recherche Scientifique. During this time, he spent a year at the Institute for Advanced Study in Princeton, New Jersey, where he was sponsored by John von Neumann. In 1955, he married Aliette Kagan and moved to Geneva, Switzerland, to collaborate with Jean Piaget at the International Center for Genetic Epistemology, and later to the University Lille Nord de France. In 1958, the couple moved to the United States, where Mandelbrot joined the research staff at the IBM Thomas J. Watson Research Center in Yorktown Heights, New York. He remained at IBM for 35 years, becoming an IBM Fellow and later Fellow Emeritus. From 1951 onward, Mandelbrot worked on problems and published papers not only in mathematics, but in applied fields such as information theory, economics, and fluid dynamics. Randomness and Fractals in Financial Markets Mandelbrot saw financial markets as an example of wild randomness, characterized by concentration and long-range dependence. He developed several original approaches for modeling financial fluctuations. In his early work, he found that the price changes in financial markets did not follow a Gaussian distribution, but rather levy stable distributions having infinite variance. He found, for example, that cotton prices followed a levy stable distribution with parameter alpha equal to 1.7 rather than 2 as in a Gaussian distribution. 
Stable distributions have the property that the sum of many instances of a random variable follows the same distribution, but with a larger scale parameter. The latter work from the early 60s was done with daily data of cotton prices from 1900, long before he introduced the word fractal. In later years, after the concept of fractals had matured, the study of financial markets in the context of fractals became possible only after the availability of high-frequency data in finance. In the late 1980s, Mandelbrot used intradaily tick data supplied by Olson and Associates in Zurich to apply fractal theory to market microstructure. This cooperation led to the publication of the first comprehensive papers on scaling law in finance. This law shows similar properties at different time scales, confirming Mandelbrot's insight of the fractal nature of market microstructure. Mandelbrot's own research in this area is presented in his books Fractals and Scaling in Finance and the Misbehavior of Markets. Developing Fractal Geometry and the Mandelbrot set. As a visiting professor at Harvard University, Mandelbrot began to study mathematical objects called Julia sets that were invariant under certain transformations of the complex plane. Building on previous work by Gaston Julia and Pierre Fatou, Mandelbrot used a computer to plot images of the Julia sets. While investigating the topology of these Julia sets, he studied the Mandelbrot set, which was introduced by him in 1979. In 1975, Mandelbrot coined the term fractal to describe these structures and first published his ideas in the French book Les Objets Fractales, Form, Hassard et Dimension, later translated in 1977 as Fractals form, chance, and dimension. According to computer scientist and physicist Stephen Wolfram, the book was a breakthrough for Mandelbrot, who until then would typically apply fairly straightforward mathematics to areas that had barely seen the light of serious mathematics before. Wolfram adds that as a result of this new research, he was no longer a wandering scientist, and later called him the father of fractals. Mandelbrot ended up doing a great piece of science and identifying a much stronger and more fundamental idea, put simply that there are some geometric shapes, which he called fractals, that are equally rough at all scales. No matter how close you look, they never get simpler, much as the section of a rocky coastline you can see at your feet looks just as jagged as the stretch you can see from space. Wolfram briefly describes fractals as a form of geometric repetition, in which smaller and smaller copies of a pattern are successively nested inside each other, so that the same intricate shapes appear no matter how much you zoom in to the whole. Fern leaves and Romanesque broccoli are two examples from nature. He points out an unexpected conclusion. One might have thought that such a simple and fundamental form of regularity would have been studied for hundreds, if not thousands, of years. But it was not. In fact, it rose to prominence only over the past thirty or so years almost entirely through the efforts of one man, the mathematician Benoit Mandelbrot. Mandelbrot used the term fractal as it derived from the Latin word fractus, defined as broken or shattered glass. Using the newly developed IBM computers at his disposal, Mandelbrot was able to create fractal images using graphics computer code, images that an interviewer described as looking like the delirious exuberance of the 1960s psychedelic art, with forms hauntingly reminiscent of nature and the human body. 
He also saw himself as a would-be Kepler, after the 17th-century scientist Johannes Kepler, who calculated and described the orbits of the planets. Mandelbrot, however, never felt he was inventing a new idea. He described his feelings in a documentary with science writer Arthur C. Clarke. Exploring this set, I certainly never had the feeling of invention. I never had the feeling that my imagination was rich enough to invent all those extraordinary things on discovering them. They were there, even though nobody had seen them before. It's marvelous. A very simple formula explains all these very complicated things. So the goal of science is starting with a mess and explaining it with a simple formula, a kind of dream of science. According to Clark, the Mandelbrot set is indeed one of the most astonishing discoveries in the entire history of mathematics. Who could have dreamed that such an incredibly simple equation could have generated images of literally infinite complexity? Clark also notes an odd coincidence. The name Mandelbrot and the word Mandela for a religious symbol, which I'm sure is a pure coincidence, but indeed the Mandelbrot set does seem to contain an enormous number of mandalas. In 1982, Mandelbrot expanded and updated his ideas in the fractal geometry of nature. This influential work brought fractals into the mainstream of professional and popular mathematics, as well as silencing critics who had dismissed fractals as program artifacts. Mandelbrot left IBM in 1987 after 35 years and 12 days, when IBM decided to end pure research in his division. He joined the Department of Mathematics at Yale. And obtained his first tenured post in 1999, at the age of 75. At the time of his retirement in 2005, he was Sterling Professor of Mathematical Sciences, Fractals, and the Theory of Roughness. Mandelbrot created the first ever theory of roughness. And he saw roughness in the shapes of mountains, coastlines, and river basins, the structures of plants, blood vessels, and lungs, the clustering of galaxies. His personal quest was to create some mathematical formula to measure the overall roughness of such objects in nature. He began by asking himself various kinds of questions related to nature. Can geometry deliver what the Greek root of its name, geo, seemed to promise? Truthful measurement, not only of cultivated fields along the Nile River, but also of untamed earth. In his paper, "How Long Is the Coast of Britain?" Statistical Self-Similarity and Fractional Dimension, published in Science in 1967, Mandelbrot discusses self-similar curves. That have Hausdorff dimension that are examples of fractals, although Mandelbrot does not use this term in the paper, as he did not coin it until 1975. The paper is one of Mandelbrot's first publications on the topic of fractals. Mandelbrot emphasized the use of fractals as realistic and useful models for describing many rough phenomena in the real world. He concluded that. Real roughness is often fractal and can be measured. Although Mandelbrot coined the term fractal, some of the mathematical objects he presented in the Fractal Geometry of Nature had been previously described by other mathematicians. Before Mandelbrot, however, they were regarded as isolated curiosities with unnatural and non-intuitive properties. Mandelbrot brought these objects together for the first time, and turned them into essential tools for the long-stalled effort to extend the scope of science 
to explaining non-smooth, rough objects in the real world. His methods of research were both old and new. The form of geometry I increasingly favored is the oldest, most concrete, and most inclusive, specifically empowered by the eye and helped by the hand, and today, also by the computer, bringing an element of unity to the worlds of knowing and feeling, and, unwittingly, as a bonus, for the purpose of creating beauty. Fractals are also found in human pursuits, such as music, painting, architecture, and stock market prices. Mandelbrot believed that fractals, far from being unnatural, were in many ways more intuitive and natural than the artificially smooth objects of traditional Euclidean geometry. Clouds are not spheres, mountains are not cones, coastlines are not circles, and bark is not smooth, nor does lightning travel in a straight line. Mandelbrot, in his introduction to the fractal geometry of nature, Mandelbrot has been called an artist and a visionary and a maverick. His informal and passionate style of writing and his emphasis on visual and geometric intuition, supported by the inclusion of numerous illustrations, made the fractal geometry of nature accessible to non-specialists. The book sparked widespread popular interest in fractals and contributed to chaos theory and other fields of science and mathematics. Mandelbrot also put his ideas to work in cosmology. He offered in 1974 a new explanation of Olbera's paradox, the dark night sky riddle, demonstrating the consequences of fractal theory as a sufficient but not necessary resolution of the paradox. He postulated that if the stars in the universe were fractally distributed, for example, like Cantor dust, it would not be necessary to rely on the Big Bang theory to explain the paradox. His model would not rule out a Big Bang, but would allow for a dark sky, even if the Big Bang had not occurred. Awards and Honors Mandelbrot's awards include the Wolf Prize for Physics in 1993, the Louis Fry Richardson Prize of the European Geophysical Society in 2000, the Japan Prize in 2003, and the Einstein Lectureship of the American Mathematical Society in 2006. The small asteroid 27500 Mandelbrot was named in his honor. In November 1990, he was made a chevalier in France's Legion of Honor. In December 2005, Mandelbrot was appointed to the position of Battelle Fellow at the Pacific Northwest National Laboratory. Mandelbrot was promoted to an Officer of the Legion of Honor in January 2006. An honorary degree from Johns Hopkins University was bestowed on Mandelbrot in the May 2010 commencement exercises. A partial list of awards received by Mandelbrot. Death and Legacy Mandelbrot died from pancreatic cancer at the age of 85 in a hospice in Cambridge, Massachusetts, on the 14th of October, 2010. Reacting to news of his death, mathematician Heinz Otto Peitgen said, If we talk about impact inside mathematics and applications in the sciences, he is one of the most important figures of the last 50 years. Chris Anderson, TED Conference curator, described Mandelbrot as an icon who changed how we see the world. Nicolas Sarkozy, president of France at the time of Mandelbrot's death, said Mandelbrot had a powerful, original mind that never shied away from innovating and shattering preconceived notions his work, developed entirely outside mainstream research, led to modern information theory. Mandelbrot's obituary in The Economist 
points out his fame as celebrity beyond the academy and lauds him as the father of fractal geometry. Best-selling essayist author Nassim Nicholas Taleb has remarked that Mandelbrot's book, The Misbehavior of Markets, is in his opinion the deepest and most realistic finance book ever published. <laughs>